Iranian military said Wednesday it had successfully tested anti-missile defenses for sensitive sites during war games in central Iran after Israeli and U.S. warnings over its nuclear program. The country's air defenses are perfectly prepared to protect sensitive and vital installations through a multi-layered defense system, said General Amir Kaderahinzadeh, commander of Hazrat Qadam al-Anbiya Air Base at Semna, quoted by the Fars News Agency. The exercises, which began on Tuesday, combined the Army's Majid defense system with the Desfal system of the elite Revolutionary Guard Corps to destroy incoming cruise missiles. Iran's central region is home to the Natan's enrichment plant and other nuclear sites. The war games there came ahead of a visit to Iran expected on Thursday by a European Union envoy coordinating talks on reviving a troubled nuclear deal between Tehran and major powers including the United States. A solid and multi-layered defense against cruise missile attacks was one of the objectives of the joint air defense exercises that were carried out successfully, Rahimzadeh said. These air defense systems are from now on deployed all over the country, said the head of the aerospace branch of the Guard Corps, Brigadier General Amirali Hajizadeh. We didn't have this capability 15 years ago. We depended on foreign equipment for radar and ground-to-air systems, he said. Radars and electronic surveillance systems were also deployed in the operations, state news agency Erna said. EU envoy Enrique Mora is set to visit Iran with mounting pressure from European countries, as well as from the Biden administration, for a swift resumption of negotiations on a U.S. return to the 2015 nuclear deal. The 2015 deal gave Iran sanctions relief in return for curbs on its nuclear program, but has been on life support since 2018, when then U.S. President Donald Trump unilaterally pulled out and reimposed crippling sanctions. Iran has said repeatedly that it is ready to resume talks soon. Rob Malley, the U.S. negotiator who led indirect talks with Iran earlier this year, said in Washington on Wednesday that Biden's administration preferred a return to the 2015 deal. But it was possible Tehran will choose a different path, and the U.S. is working with regional allies on a plan B, he said. Iran sped development of its missile and rocket capabilities in a bid to counter Iraq. Iran acquired a number of Soviet-designed Scud-B short-range ballistic missiles from Libya, Syria, and North Korea. In 1985, the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC, created its own military units, including its own missile force, in hopes of reverse-engineering the Scud-B missiles with the help of North Korea, which had itself used the Scud-B to create the Hwasong-5 missile. By the end of its war with Iraq in 1988, Iran was able to open a manufacturing plant to produce its own Scud-B variant, the Shahab-1 ballistic missile. But before that, Iran and Iraq both targeted one another's urban areas in exchanges of fire that became known as the War of the Cities. Hundreds of thousands of Iranians evacuated Tehran as the combat raged. The experience of the war taught Iran the strategic value of using missiles to break the morale of opponents' populations and raising the economic cost of attacking Iran. Since then, Iran continued to pursue an advanced and diverse ballistic missile arsenal, often with North Korean guidance. In the 1990s, Iran developed the Shahab-2, its own variant of the Scud-C missile, equivalent to North Korea's Hwasong-6. While the Shahab-2's range of 500 kilometers, 310 miles, improved slightly on its predecessors, it still fell within the category of a short-range ballistic missile.
At the same time, Iran also developed a medium-range ballistic missile based on North Korea's Wasong-7, another reverse-engineered Scud. The Shahab-3, with a range of 2,000 kilometers, could reach most of the Middle East. For Iran, the deterrence that even inaccurate missiles can provide gives them strategic importance. Today, the Iranian missile arsenal is perhaps the region's largest and most diverse. As Gulf Arab rivals such as Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates spend billions on Western-made military equipment to arm their conventional militaries in a way that sanctions strapped Iran cannot match, Tehran has chosen to continue to invest in its missile program as a standoff weapon. In the event of a regional war, the missile arsenal would allow Iran to damage the Saudi and Emirati economies and threaten their civilian populations. Similarly, Iran's strategy of providing missiles to allies like the Houthis in Yemen, Hezbollah in Lebanon and Hamas in the Palestinian territories achieved many of the same strategic objectives in a wider geographic footprint.